Hey there, we are live from Midtown Comics Times Square. I am Henry. Happy Wednesday to you. Of course, it is a great and beautiful day in the world of comics. There's a lot of really cool stuff out on shelves this week, and we have tons that we want to tell you about. So we're going to get started right away. First off, we're going to look at some of the staff picks of the week, and we've got some cool stuff. First off, we've got Jade suggesting Moonstruck, a very fun series if you want some uh, fun look at werewolves. Very cute book there. Then we also have the brand new issue of Darth Vader from Charles Sewell with Giuseppe Comicoli, and I love this cover. Sarah's got good taste. Then Miguel, of course, he's a big Iceman fan, so you know it's a guaranteed pick of the week for him. Then we also have Raph suggesting Uber Invasion by Kieran Gillen, a very cool pick. And then Fonz put up Rocco's Modern Life, which is awesome, and I do actually want to show off, if you look right here, this really great cover as well for the book. I saw it there. I smiled because I, of course, watched Rocco's Modern Life for years, so it's really cool to see it return to the world as a comic book. But now let's get started on the main new releases for the week. And starting us off, we've got Chimichanga from Dark Horse. This is issue number four, The Sorrow of the World's Worst Face. I mean, yeah, that is pretty rough. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I don't, I don't think that's what I would want. Then as we move on, we also have Rasputin, the voice of the dragon from the pages of Hellboy. Mike Mignola and Chris Roberson presenting a cool flashback tale to uh, the man that Hellboy punches in the face all the time. But really cool stuff if you're a fan of the series. Uh, check it out. Then we also have the brand new issue of Usagi Ojimbo from Stan Sakai. Of course, issue 164. And I was just saying, you know, Usagi Yojimbo's been going for years and years and years, and I've never heard a single person say anything bad about it. Great book if you want to check it out. Issue 164, 164 issues of quality. Now we do hit DC, and you'll notice right away a change, because, of course, this week DC started their new corner box art, which is really cool, really spiffy, and really subtle, bringing you back to the olden days of comics. Of course, I mean, they're not that old, but it's been a while since we've seen corner boxes, so it is cool. And with Bash, Batman issue number 36, we've got a couple different covers here. We've got the main cover by Clayman, and then Olivier Coipel is now going to be the alternate cover artist for Batman, which is fantastic because he hasn't really done DC work in years and years. This book is really cool if you're a fan of Batman and Superman. They are teaming up, and I can just show you the first page, and right away you know you're in for a treat because Clayman's a great artist. And seeing him draw the Man of Steel with the Cape Crusader is going to be a lot of fun for the fans. Now, moving on, we also have another terrific team-up for Batman. It looks like the dynamic duo this time around is him teaming up with the Shadow, Steve Orlando and Giovanni Tempano. Really cool stuff. This is co-produced with Dynamite, as you can see by that little banner right there. And then we've got another team-up because we've got Batman and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. That's right. They are back for more. It is the same creative team that brought you Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the first time around. So it's James Tynion the fourth, it's Freddie Williams the second, and it's amazing. Co-produced with IDW, that's why you see multiple labels there. This time we see Donatello seeking out Batman for a, a little bit of guidance, a little bit of extra training, and the world of story brings us to Gotham. It's going to be rough, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Then as we move on, we've also got a couple reprinted editions of Batman White Knight. So we've got issue one, if you missed out on issue one. We've got issue two, if you missed out on issue two. And guess what? It's time for a new issue, issue number three of Batman White Knight. Very cool cover here. I love, I love the way that he draws Harley Quinn. I'm a sucker for Harley Quinn. You guys know that. Big fan, big fan of the series. Sean Gordon Murphy is doing a great job here. And there are, of course, a couple different covers. This one's cool, too. You get to see... Uh, Batgirl and Nightwing. Now, as we move on, we've got the brand new issue of Bane Conquest from Chuck Dixon and Graham Nolan. Very cool. From the original creators of Bane comes a new story featuring Bane. What's not to love? Really cool. Very exciting. If you're a fan of Big Burly Men, you know, he's in a couple different books this week. Then we also have the brand new issue of Nightwing, Tim Seeley and Javi Fernandez. A couple different covers here. Very cool stuff. As we see, uh, Nightwing taking the fight to uh, Raptor still, finishing things off. Very fun story if you're a fan. And if you've been liking what Nightwing's been doing since day one of his new series, 
you got to be reading it still because this is how the story has evolved and grown and played out. Then we also have Black Lightning Cold Dead Hands issue number two. Now this is really fun. Clayton Henry on art, Tony Isabella uh, writing the book. And he is, of course, the original creator of Black Lightning. I love the DCs doing this. You know, we got Bane Conquest, we got Black Lightning Cold Dead Hands, all these books where they're bringing back the original voices that define these characters. Really cool way to honor the history of them. And this is a really great book. If you're excited for the new Black Lightning series, check out his book. It's really great. Very cool. And I'm quite enjoying it myself. I like Clayton Henry a lot. Then we also have the brand new issue of Bombshells United from Marguerite Bennett. Really cool stuff here. It looks like uh, Batwoman's got her bat ready and she's going to need to beat off some very angry guys. You don't, you know, sometimes you just need a baseball bat. Sometimes that's what gets you through the day, you know. Now, as we move on, we've got Cyborg issue number 19. A couple different covers here. Really digging what's going on with this series. Of course, Cyborg was one of my favorite parts of the Justice League movie. And if you are like me and you love the movie, you got to check out the book to see what's going on with Victor Stone. Then we also have Dastardly and Muttley from Garth Ennis. This is issue number four, a very weird take on a classic Hanna-Barbera character. And then we have one of my favorite books of the week, the DC Holiday Special featuring some of the greatest creators in all of comics. And I'm not going to lie, when I was flipping through this and when I saw how many people were on it, I kind of geeked out a little bit. It is $9.99, so I understand. You look at it, you're like, whoa, $9.99 for one book. Whoa, that's crazy. But no, no, no. This is like an entire trade paperback's worth of stories. First off, it's got its own spine, which tells you it's a huge book. But then you've got great creators. You open it up, and we've got Jeff Lemire. We've got Giuseppe Comicoli. We've got Greg Rucca. We've got Bill Quisevoli. We have some of the coolest names in all of comics, all featured throughout here. And we get some great stories featuring all of DC's characters, including St. Nick himself. But, uh... You know, hopefully Deathstroke's got a little bit of that Christmas spirit in him. Hopefully it's not going to be coal in his uh, Christmas packages this year. Then we have the second issue of Dead Man by uh, Neil Adams. Really cool series. If you're a fan of Neil Adams' work, you know you're buying this. You know you're checking it out. And if you're not, you're missing out. He's one of the most legendary creators in all of comic book history. And now he is having a lot of fun with Dead Man. And then we have the brand new issue of Deathstroke, issue number 26, Defiance from Christopher Priest at the mercy of Dr. Icon. Really cool. If, you've been, if you haven't been reading Deathstroke, uh, it's really been great. Christopher Priest has been doing a really good job. He's really got a great knack for the character. Now we are going to bump up and talk about some of the collections that are out this week. And starting us off, we've got the Batman Noir edition of Court of Owls. That's Scott Snyder. That's Greg Capullo. And that is one of the most critically acclaimed books of the last decade and now in stunning black and white that's what the noir books are so if you never checked them out it's like they just sapped all the color away so they could focus on the intensity of the inks batman noir it's great if you're a fan of the black, batman black and white series it's the natural conclusion then we have batgirl and the birds of prey volume two source code love that yannick paquet cover there and Julie and Shauna Benson are really doing some great work with the birds, having a lot of fun. Now, as we move on, you'll see this thing is huge. This thing is huge. This is actually probably too much for me to pick up with one hand. Uh, this is the Fourth World Omnibus. This is Jack Kirby at his finest. Some of his greatest stories you'll see right here on the spine. We got Big Barda. You see on the cover, we got Orion. We got Darkseid. You flip it around to the back, we got Darkseid once more. And this collects everything you could ever want. It's got The Fourth World by Jack Kirby. So you know it's got Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen. It's got The New Gods. It's got The Forever People. It's got Mr. Miracle. It's got The Hunger Dogs, which that's really cool because that's just an OG. You know, that's a original graphic novel that they threw in here. And I think it's awesome. I actually really love that they put in uh, Superman's pal uh, Jimmy Olsen because that's uh, where you get your first appearance at Darkseid. So if you're a fan of the fourth world this thing is so big i'm struggling to even put it away maybe i'll just take it myself but really check this out it's great then we have volume four of green arrow the rise of star city 
this has been what Ben Percy built up all of his Green Arrow to reach the Rise of Star City. We get some crazy stuff. Black Canary, Green Arrow. He handles their dynamics so well, and this is such a treat for longtime fans of the character. Then we also have the Justice League Detroit era omnibus. Now this is really cool too. So there's a couple big omnibuses because you know the holidays are coming up. So they put out these really nice editions. The Detroit era is great because it features a number of the most iconic stories with the Justice League featuring a lot of members that we hadn't seen before. So it's really cool. You get to see Vixen. He's not here on the cover, but Vibe is in these pages. And that's great because it's the original Vibe stories. We've got Zatanna, Martian Manhunter, and Aquaman leading the charge. What's not to love? Then we have the Justice League Power Rangers hardcover edition. This is a nice, slim hardcover edition of the book by Tom Taylor and Stephen Byrne. Great book. All six issues collected in one edition for the low price of $24.99 for a nice hardcover like that. You're not going to find a better deal. Then we also have Shazam! The New Beginning 30th Anniversary Edition from Roy Thomas, one of the most iconic men in comic book history. Roy Thomas has done it all. And you got to check out Shazam! Because Shazam's an amazing character. Gotta love Captain Marvel. Then we also have Suicide Squad! Volume 7 by John Ostrander. Now, this is some really cool stuff from uh, the 80s. If you want to see the Suicide Squad in their original run, check out the original stuff. It's John Ostrander. He's an amazing writer, and it's Volume 7. So pick up 1 through 6 as well and check it out and enjoy some fantastic books. Now, we are going to move down, and we're going to start looking at some of these new releases once more. And that brings us to Green Arrow issue number 35. I talked about it before when I talked about the trade paperback, but man, I love Ben Percy's Green Arrow. It is one of my favorite books going on. Show off that cool cover by Mike Grell. And it's a great book. It's Juan Ferreira on art. Juan Ferreira is an amazing artist. I actually got a commission from him back in New York Comic Con a couple months ago because I love his art so much. And I love the book. Green Arrow is a character I previously never cared about. But Ben Percy has made this one of my favorite books in all of DC. Then as we continue on, we have the brand new issue of Green Lantern. It's a couple different covers here. Showed off. Tim Seeley is now at the helm for this book. And we get to see some cool stuff going on with Simon Baz and Jessica Cruz. There's also a brand new issue of Harley and Ivy meet Betty and Veronica. And I want to show off the Stephanie Hans cover because I really like that. We get to see a bit of topsy-turvy uh, replacements here because, you know, you can see the cheerleader uniforms, but that's not Betty and Veronica. There's been a bit of a switcheroo, and you got to be careful because those are not lives you want to mix up. Check it out. It's a lot of fun. DC's really doing a great job of teaming up with other companies to present stories you've never seen before, such as this. Then we have the brand new issue of Injustice 2, issue number 15, Supergirl on Paradise Island. But it doesn't look like Paradise to me. It looks like uh, she's going to have a rough day. Then there's a brand new issue of The Jetsons from Jimmy Palmiotti. Show off a couple different covers here. Really dig this uh, Dan Panosian cover because I also just love Dan Panosian. And it is a cool series as well if you want a modern day version of The Jetsons the future family then this is great this makes me happy we have christopher priest and pete woods on justice league starting with this issue issue number 34 that is right as a new creative team so that means that the time is now to jump onto this book if you aren't reading justice league this is your opportunity to jump into the book it is completely accessible and it's got everybody you could possibly want on the team because you got aquaman you got flash you got batman wonder woman and what I like is that this is a human story, you know, at the root of the story is really can the Justice League truly do it all or are they just fallible at the end of the day? Really cool stuff here. Uh, show off this nice little cover here by J.G. Jones. And I really dig this book. Check it out, please, because Christopher Priest is doing a great job already. One issue in and I am hooked. And Pete Woods, is a, this is a great book for him. Then we have the brand new issue of Superman from uh, Pete Tomasi and Patrick Gleason with Doug Mankey doing some of the art here. A couple different covers. We got the John Boy cover, which is uh, pretty cool. But I do love this visual of Superman sitting on uh, Darkseid's throne because that's just terrifying. That is not 
That's not what I want Superman to be doing. Superman's supposed to be helping us. Superman looks like he's blowing up planets here. That's not good. But the book is. So please, do d dive in and check out the amazing story unfolding in Imperious Lex. Then we have Archie issue number 26 from Mark Wade and Audrey Mock. Very cool stuff. A couple different covers here. Show that off. There's like, there's normally three covers. There we go. Boom, another cool cover for Archie. If you haven't been reading the Archie books the last couple of years, you're missing out because they're a lot of fun. Then we have, now this is cool. This is cool and this is weird. So bear with me for a moment. This is Santa Claus like you've never seen him before. And I mean it in the most sincere way possible. This is Klaus. It's Grant Morrison. It's Dan Mora. And it is great. And it is the crisis in Xmasville. And you will see here, we have a very burly and muscular looking Santa Claus. Then we have evil Santa Claus. And then we have an army of zombie Santa Clauses. And if that is not the craziest sentence you have heard this morning, I don't know what you were doing that was more bizarre than this. It's Grant Morrison. It is great. If you're a fan of Grant Morrison, you know he does some crazy books. But this is really great, and I really enjoyed the original Klaus series, and I'm very excited. And this puts me in the holiday spirit. There's some really great stuff going on here. Please check it out. Dan Mora's art is amazing. Please. Merry Christmas. Check it out. Then as we continue on, we also have the return of a sci-fi classic in Barbarella. Really cool stuff here from Dynamite and Mike Carey. A bunch of different covers here. And I mean, there's just like a plethora. There's a wealth. I could, I'd be pulling out covers all day because there really are some great art to showcase. Uh, there is some great art to showcase. Pardon me. And it's a really cool series. If you are a fan of the classic series... Or if you're not, it's Mike Carey. Mike Carey is an amazing writer, and seeing him jump onto this beloved franchise is a treat for everybody. Then we also have Love and Rockets, of course, a classic uh, indie book that everybody should check out at least once. Love and Rockets is cool, it's crazy, it's weird, and it's got the Hernandez brothers on it. So they're indie darlings for a reason. This book's been going for quite some time, and it's a lot of fun. Then we also have street fighter reloaded issue number two and we have the street fighter shadowloo special number one very cool stuff here if you're a fan of street fighter franchise show off that cool vega cover i really dig that and i really dig i dig street fighter i've got like a bunch of street fighter statues at home because it's just such a cool fun franchise so check out the comic books too because they're really great then valiant gives us another wonderful winter wonderland special as we get faith's winter wonderland special you, you see very fun very cool uh marguerite savage and francis portella doing some cool stuff here really cute really great to see faith getting spotlighted you know she's one of the best characters valiant's got and she is a really endearing character so if you haven't ever read any of her stuff this is a chance get in the holiday spirit you guys it's going to be great then we also have Gem and the Holograms Dimensions, number one. Really cool stuff here from uh, Kate Leth. And I'm a big Kate Leth fan, so it's very cool to see her jumping onto the Gem and the Holograms franchise because I couldn't think of a better pairing if I tried. And then we also have Star Trek The Next Generation Mirror Broken. Things look not okay here, but of course it's because it's from the Mirror Mirror World, Mirror Broken. You get what they're going for. Some cool stuff here if you're a fan of Star Trek. Then we'll close off IDW before we bump on up and we're going to talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue number 77, The Invasion of the Triceratons. Some cool stuff there. I mean, it's giant dinosaur people. What's not to love about that? It's dinosaur people in New York. Come on. It's great. Then we have a couple cool collections from IDW as well. The Judge Dread Inner City Zero collection. We have Micronauts, Wrath of Karza, we have the Monstrous Collection from Steve Niles and Bernie Wrightson, uh, the late, great Bernie Wrightson. Then we also have uh, Mummies, some classic horror comics. And we've got the Darkness Within, an oversized edition of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Volume 2. So this has a bunch of what IDW has been doing these last couple years with their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles books. If you haven't picked them up, this is your chance to get a whole lump of them in one place. It's great. 
Now we are going to bump around and we're going to talk about some of these cool collected editions that are going on. First off, this book is huge. This book is taking up the whole screen. This is Watchmen annotated. Now that's great because, of course, Watchmen is probably the most discussed uh, piece of graphic literature of all time. Everybody on the planet has their two cents about it. And now you can find out all there is to know about one of the most historic pieces of comic book fiction ever. And it's even got a forward from artist Dave Gibbons, which is great. Then we have the brand new volume seven of Lumberjanes, a bird's eye view. Really fun series. If you haven't checked it out, you're missing out because Lumberjanes is great. Hand it to your kids. They're going to love it. It's really a lot of cool stuff. Then we have Rick and Morty volume six. Now that's definitely not for the kids, but it is a great series. A lot of fun, really comedic book. We also have Starhawks Volume 2, the classic comic strip from Gil Kane and Ron Goulart. Then we have some more cool stuff over here, such as Street Fighter, the novel, Where Strength Lies. Uh, very cool stuff there. Then we have I Hate Fairyland, Book 1, hardcover. This is really cute. This is a really nice edition. We'll flip it around. You see there's some nice depth to this here. And it's $30. This is... Uh, it might look cute, probably not for the kids, just fair warning, but it is definitely a lot of fun and some cool twisted stories going on there. Then we have Rocket Girl Volume 2 from Brandon Montclair and Amy Reader, finally uh, collecting the new material that they just put out these last couple months, some great stuff. And we have the trade paperback edition of Shirtless Bear Fighter from Jody LaHoop. Sebastian Gerner and Neil Vendrell. If you didn't pick up Shirtless Bear Fighter, it was one of the best miniseries that Image put out this year. It was fantastic, and you should check it out because it's really great. And it's the entire series. Entire series for 17 bucks. That's it. Buy it. It's great. Please support uh, your local bear fighter. Then we have Youngblood Volume 1 Reborn. This is from the new series, Chad Bowers and Jim Toe. And then... We've got a, a touch of Marvel here, as we've got Black Bolt, Volume 1, Hard Time. This book is awesome. This is one of my favorite books that Marvel is putting out. I'm going to talk about it more because there's a new issue of Black Bolt this week. But if you guys haven't been reading Black Bolt, pick up the trade paperback. It's got the first six issues, and it is worth it. It is super worth it. It's so great. Christian Ward's art is crazy. And it's also a prison story with Black Bolt, and he doesn't have his powers, and it's awesome. So pick it up. Now we are going to bring it back down, and we're going to hit Image. So starting us off with Image, we have Black Cloud, the brand new issue. Some cool stuff, issue number six from Jason Latour. And then we also have Extremity, issue number nine from Daniel Warren Johnson and Mike Spicer. Now moving on over, you'll see that we have the brand new issue of The Fix. That's right, Nick Spencer and Steve Lieber are back for another fantastic tale of comedy gold in the fix and then there's the grave diggers union uh second issue for some cool stuff from craig cypress really interesting and we also have the brand new issue of mirror emma rios i love you emma rios i'm happy to see emma rios doing some great books and Mirror is definitely that. It's a great book. Check it out. Issue number nine. Then we have Moonstruck, which we talked about earlier. Some cool uh, fantasy, some werewolf stuff going on here. Then we have the second issue of number one with a bullet. Really cool new book that Image just started off last month. And we also have the brand new issue of Paper Girls, issue number 18. This is great. We had, uh, of course, we had Brian K. Vaughn and Cliff Chang a couple weeks back stopping by, saying hey, and having a good time. And this book is nothing but a good time. Well, actually, that's not true. Sometimes it's a little bit spooky. Sometimes it's a little bit depressing. But, you know, the book is good, though, so that's the good time you're having. You know, sometimes it's good to be sad. Sometimes it's good to get upset, you know. Powerful stuff here. But really, Paper Girls is a great book. Then we also have a brand new series starting off this week. Paradiso, issue number one, really cool looking, really uh, bizarre, hand, robot, monstrosity, you know, flesh peeling off, you know, it happens, you know, it happens, it's, it's okay. I mean, there is a very cool variant cover for it as well. And we have a few, wow, we've got a big week from Image, because we also have the brand new issue 
of Rock Candy Mountain, Chapter 6, Where the Rain Don't Fall. Really cool stuff here. And then we have issue number 229 of Savage Dragon. Man, how has Eric Larson's hand not just fallen off completely yet? Because the man writes it, the man draws it, and the man's been doing it since day one. 229 issues. That's crazy. That's amazing. And it's a great book. Then we also have the brand new issue of Scales and Scoundrels from Sebastian Gurner. You want to see two completely different stories. He's got this and he's got Shirtless Bear Fighter. And both the same week and they're both completely radically different. But they're both pretty cool. And the Scales and Scoundrels is a lot of fun. Uh, much more family friendly. Then there's another new series, Sleepless, issue number one from Image, from Sarah Vaughn and from Lila De De sorry, Lila Del Duca. Very cool stuff here. And then we also have the brand new issue of Stray Bullets, issue number 30, Sunshine and Roses from David Laffham. And Throwaways, uh, issue number 10 of the series. Some cool stuff here. And then we've got uh, Violent Love from Frank Barber. Really cool stuff. Victor Santos, of course, doing the art. Really cool stuff going on in the pages of that book. And you want to talk about a weird, cool book. We've got Void Trip, issue number one, signed by artist Plaid Klaus. Of course, he was here a couple weeks ago to talk with us about the book. So take the time, go back, hear what Plaid had to say about the book, because, man, he's got some crazy thoughts on this book. And this book is crazy and definitely a lot of fun. Cool miniseries you guys should be checking out. And then we're going to close off Image with two juggernaut books. And these are both huge and very cool. We've got the brand new issue of Walking Dead, issue 174, focusing on uh, Negan. Poor Negan, you know. I'd feel bad for the guy, but he's a real jerk. So, you know, maybe he had it coming. And we do have a new series here with a familiar title. Of course, I'm talking about Witchblade. That is right. Witchblade is back and reimagined for a new era. It is your chance to jump on to a classic and I mean classic Top Cow series, like Image Top Cow. This is like their baby. This is one of their flagship books. And you got to check it out. It's a great new place to get into the franchise. I believe there is another cover, but maybe I'm mistaken. But very cool stuff here. Caitlin Kittredge jumping on board as the writer. Please check it out because it's Witchblade. You know it's going to be good. Then we are going to take a turn going up. And talk about some cool collections from Marvel. And first off, this is something that is very near and dear to my heart. This is Captain America by, Mike, by Mark Wade and Ron Garney and Andy Kubert. Now, this thing is huge. You want to talk about a nice omnibus edition. So Mark Wade had one of the most significant runs of Captain America and one of the most popular in the 90s. And this collects the whole wealth of it. So it collects both of his times on the title. So this issues 444 through 454. And then... When they relaunched it a couple years uh, later because of Heroes Reborn and all that, you know, comics, nonsense, uh, Mark Wade did come back on, and it's also got some cool annuals. It's got 12 issues of Captain America Sentinel of Liberty. This thing is mammoth. I mean, I just listed off like 40-plus comics. Like, I think that's like 50 books in here, and it's crazy, and it's Mark Wade. This is really cool. This is great. This was actually my first comic book that I had as a kid was Captain America uh, Operation Rebirth, which is, of course, a part of that. So check it out for a classic. And Mark Wade's still writing it today. So, you know, the guy knows what he's doing. Then we have uh, Doctor Strange Hardcover Edition, Volume 1 from Jason Aaron and Chris Bacalo. Now, that is a cool cover. That is really cool. Uh, hopefully you guys can get a nice view at it because it is very dark but Chris Bacalo and Jason Aaron had a really fantastic run on Doctor Strange and now is a great chance to check it out because it's put in this nice hardcover edition how much does this hardcover have this hardcover has dun, 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 the first 10 issues and the last days of magic special which was an oversized special so it's got a lot of stuff in there you got 11 comics to read and it is definitely rewarding because it's Jason Aaron then we also have the brand new Punisher Epic Collection, Capital Punishment. Now, how is that for a uh, play on words? That's pretty cool. This is, of course, collecting some of the classic stuff from Dan Abnett and Annie Lanning. I didn't know they worked on Punisher. That's awesome. Oh, man, they're great. Oh, I love those guys. Uh, this is the stories from 92 to 93. Hey, 1992, what an amazing year. But really, some great stuff in there. Then we also have the little book of The Amazing Spider-Man. 
if you want a cool little stocking stuffer, this is a great idea because it's Spider-Man and it's a great little book. It's cool, you know? Then we have Star Wars Volume 6. That's right, Volume 6 by Jason Aaron. Really cool stuff. I was just talking about Jason Aaron. You know, the guy is really amazing. Check out Star Wars. You know, there, there might be a movie in a week. You never know. Maybe you should read the comics just to prep yourself. And while we're on the subject, check out The New Republic, The Legends, Volume 3, for some cool books that uh, were originally back when Dark Horse had the license, and now Marvel's putting them out in these really nice editions. They look great on your shelf. Then we also have Cable, Volume 1, from his latest run, James Robinson, Carlos Pacheco, and it's Cable traveling through time, chasing down like an arms dealer as he's racing through time, and he's like trying to stop them from completely messing everything up because if you give like really fancy weapons to guys like 500 years ago, you mess up the timeline. That's kind of the way these things work. And Cable is the man on the job. Pick it up. Then we do hit the main releases for Marvel this week. And wow, they've got some great stuff. First off, we've got Avengers issue number 674. This is part five of Worlds Collide. And this book has been really cool. It's Mark Wade. I, I seem to be saying his name a whole lot. Maybe he just makes a lot of really good comics. Really great stuff. Really cool for Mark Wade and Jesus says, uh, teaming up with the Champions book as well. Then we have the brand new issue, or I'm sorry, this is actually the reprinted edition first of uh, Captain America. This is issue 695. And then right here, we have Captain America 696 by Mark Wade and Chris Samney, one of the most legendary creative teams of the last decade, because of course they did great work on Daredevil, they did great work on Black Widow, and now they're doing great work on Captain America in Home of the Brave Part 2. Really cool stuff here, and I do also have to show off the super cool Phoenix variant because it's Captain America throwing a Phoenix shield and that's just awesome. Now we hit Doctor Strange issue 382 from Danny Cates and Gabriel Hernandez Walter. If you did not pick up the first issue, you're silly. Pick up the first issue because it's great because it's Donny Cates and more importantly for my taste it's Gabriel Hernandez Walter and I love Gabriel Hernandez Walter. He is a great artist and this is a great showcase of him and Jordi Belair's colors on it are perfect seriously pick it up also Loki is currently Doctor Strange and Doctor Strange is currently a vet things are weird but it's kind of awesome pick it up then we have uh, Guardians of the Galaxy issue 146 reprint edition so this is the start of the Marvel Legacy storyline so if you want to go back a couple issues and you missed out this is your way to get started very cool cover there of course homaging the Infinity Gauntlet and then we have the brand new issue 148 I really dig this cover by Aaron Cooter because I like the way it's playing with light and shadow. Nice backlit image there. But let's also show off this very fun and silly uh, cover by Erica Henderson with Rocket as if, you know, he was the Phoenix. And that'd probably be like the worst thing possible. That is the last. I do not want a raccoon with the powers of the Phoenix. Like, let's be real here, people. Bad idea. Not okay. But the book is very okay. The book is a good idea. Then we also have the brand new issue of Gwenpool from Christopher Hastings. A lot of fun. Doom sees you. Very cool. I'm actually really excited because the last couple issues, Gwenpool has been breaking the fourth wall and, like, smashing it with a hammer. Like, it's been crazy. So I really want to see how they continue to play up her uh, power set. And in what is one of my most anticipated releases of the week, Hawkeye issue number 13. Now, this is great. It's uh, Kelly Thompson. It's uh, Leonardo Romero. And... It's great. It's gorgeous. Let's show off this cool lenticular. This is, of course, a very cool homage. Let's see if I can get it to do it. There we go. This is an homage to the Matt Fraction Hawkeye, uh, which is one of my favorite comic book runs of all time. Let's show off that uh, interior art for that as well. Greg Smallwood cover. It's Greg Smallwood. I love Greg Smallwood. I actually just literally marathoned all of Moon Knight last night because I just love his art so much. And I love this book. Uh, Hawkeye is one of my favorite books that Marvel is putting out. Kelly Thompson is doing an amazing job. And if you aren't picking up this book, this is your chance. It's got both Hawkeyes in it, so you got all them bang for your buck you could possibly ask for. Pick it up. It is a delight. Then as we continue on, we have Black Bolt issue number eight. Another new storyline for Marvel Legacy. Show off this uh, cool cover 
right there. As you see, Black Bolt, of course, in the pages of the famous Days of Future Past. But this book has been really great. Uh, what they're doing with this story is really weird, and I love the cover design here. We've got like the executioner thing, but it's also the Black Bolt logo, and I don't want Black Bolt to die. I mean, I really like him. He, you know, things are just starting to look like they might be halfway decent for him. But the book is definitely super awesome. If you haven't been picking up Black Bolt, it is one of the craziest books in Marvel right now, and it is definitely worth your time. Then we have Inhumans Once and Future Kings Part 5 from Christopher Priest and Phil Noto. Very cool if you want to explore the origins of the Inhumans. And we also have Iron Fist issue number 75. And check out how awesome Iron Fist riding the Phoenix is. Because that's awesome. That is a really cool variant cover and also a really cool way to bring back his red costume. That I mean, he hasn't worn that red costume in quite some time, but it is uh, pretty cool to see it brought back in. And the book has been great, Sabretooth Round 2. It's Iron Fist teaming up with Sabretooth. How can you not love that? Now we move on to hit Spider-Man, and we've got the reprinted edition from last issue, 234, and the brand new issue, 235, Sinister Six Reborn. Brian McAbendis is doing some weird stuff here, man. It's Miles Morales with his own personal Sinister Six that he now has to face off, including the brand new Iron Spider. And I can't tell you who the Iron Spider is because that is totally the entire point of the storyline but it is awesome and they revealed it last issue so pick this up to find out who it is and then read this issue to find out why that's awful for miles and we hit one of the coolest books coming out this week and i i actually like this is completely straight from the heart this is awesome this is so cool this is what you want as a spider-man fan this is amazing spider-man venom inc alpha number one first off that cover that adi granov cover oh my god that is awesome. Second off, this book, this is everything you want. This is what fans have really wanted to see from Venom, really playing up a lot of the weird symbiote storylines that have been floating around for a while, ever since uh, Flash Thompson lost a symbiote last year. Now we get to see Flash Thompson. We get to see Eddie Brock. We get to see Peter Parker. We get to, of course, see... Uh, Lee Price, who is the most, uh, he was Venom like a year ago when Eddie lost it, and we get to see him popping up, and what makes me really happy is we get to see Mania, and Mania is, of course, the Venom uh, symbiote like that split off, that teamed up with Eddie for a while back when Rick Remender was writing it, so it's really cool that they brought all these storylines to a head in here. It's awesome, and there's two new symbiotes introduced in this. I'm not joking here. Pick this up, people. It is awesome. It is crazy if you are a Spider-Man fan especially if you're a Venom fan. Then we have Spirits of Vengeance, issue number three. First off, this cover, it's Ghost Rider and Phoenix combined. That is like, that is the coolest thing. That is so, so awesome. I love this cover. And the book has been really great. Victor Gishler and uh, David Baldion have been, do or Javier Baldion have been doing a really great job on the title. And uh, I'm really curious to see where it goes from here. Then we also have Darth Vader issue number nine from Charles Soule. Uh, very cool. Giuseppe Comicoli. Great. And it's that librarian that everybody hates from the prequels because I hated her so much, especially if you play the Revenge of the Sith video game. She was awful, and I hated her. And I really want to see Darth Vader, like, take her down a peg because that'll be fun. That's great. Then we have uh, the brand new issue of Iceman, issue number eight from Cinegrace and uh, Robert Gill. Heart of Ice, really cool stuff here. Uh, Iceman versus Iceman. Well, that just sounds cool. That just sounds interesting. I mean, we've got two different Iceman. Why not have them go at it? Then we have a couple of True Believers, and these are really cool. These are classic stories for $1. That's right, $1. And they're great. This is, they're titled Enter the Phoenix and Cyclops and Marvel Girl. So this is really great because, of course, this is the Cyclops and Marvel Girl series that ran decades ago so it is a classic reprint and here enter the phoenix this is of course an uh x-men reprint that has her first appearance and it's a dollar so check out the source material as we get excited for phoenix resurrection later this month and then to close us off we've got two more x-men books we've got x-men gold issue number 17 from mark guggenheim and ken lashley the negative zone war some crazy stuff going on there and then we have astonishing x-men issue number six Really cool covers going on here. I want to just show off, though. I actually love 
this uh, main cover, Mike Del Mundo on art for this issue, and that is Professor Xavier back in action as they try to escape the Shadow Realm. So it's cool. It's awesome. It is an exciting week. It is a lot of comics that have been coming out, so there's a lot for you guys to enjoy. So please swing by. I mean, there's some great books. There's some cool omnibuses. There's some great little stocking stuffers. There's the holiday special from DC and from Valiant, and there's Klaus. I mean, come on. What more could you possibly ask for? So please come by. Hopefully we will see you soon, and uh, have a happy Wednesday, everybody.